welcome back. I'm so glad you could join me today. Today we'll be doing a nice little interesting thing that anyone can do. And let me run the colors across the screen that you'll need to paint along with me. In the same order I have them on my palette. And let me tell you what I got done up, up here today. I have an 18 by 24 inch canvas, pre-stretched, double prime, and I put it on uh, portrait mode instead of landscape. And I just left the canvas natural tooting, not, not just on no liquid clear, no nothing. So let's get started. Hopefully they already ran the colors. And so we begin. Let's get a two inch brush right into a little bit of phthalo blue. Just a little bit. And I'm going to dip my brush into a little bit of medium. Just a little bit. Don't need much. Let's come up here. And I just want to put in the basic indication of a sky. Don't really care much about it. Just want to get it in. And make sure... Your brush has an even distribution on the tip of your end, on the tip of your brush. You do that by pulling out, tapping the bristles on both sides. And you could use a little bit of medium. Just a little bit though, you don't want to thin it out too much. So just basically blocking in color right now that's all i'm doing this will give you a good arm workout okay just get it in Just like so. Something nice and simple. I thought we could do a bright painting today. Something to cheer up the mood. You know what? I'm going to continue using that two inch brush. And I'm going to come a little below just to sort of blend the bottom of it. Just blending out the bottom with some white. Blending out those edges. Okay, now let's go into some phthalo blue. No white, no nothing. And we can darken up the corners just to give, just to bring the attention to the center. And just blend it out as best as you can. Now, to go ahead with the one inch brush. Go into some titanium white. Load my brush one direction and just let your brush move in circles. Just don't let it stop. Once it stops and you work on one single place for a while, you're going to create a big old mess in one spot and that's the last thing you want. But who am I to judge? Maybe you want a nice little mess up in there. Lift upwards. And go across. And just like so, you have yourself a nice little uh, cloud in the sky. Now, with my one and a half inch brush, I'm going to a little bit of uh, mountain mi mixture. I'm going to go into a little bit of Indian yellow just to give it that nice hue of green. What the heck, maybe even a little white just to line it up a bit. Load up this brush, 
come up here. And I just want the indication of some little distant trees. Just tap it. Tap, tap, tap. The reason why I like this brush so much is of that slight angle. If I put it against the canvas, you could see that angle. Let me come up here. Let me put a couple more trees. Okay. So that's the basic for that. Let's go ahead. Let me clear out that dark green color. Or light green, dark, whatever you want to call it. Now to mixture and cut a roll. Now, let's come up here. Let's decide where our mountain lives. Maybe mine just lives somewhere around here. Sort of shade it in. And with the angle brush, or yeah, I'm gonna just beat the devil out of it. I'm gonna grab and pull the most I can since there's no uh, medium under it. It's gonna be a little tricky, just a little bit, but you can manage to do it. Just kind of tug it out. Just like so. Okay. Now, if you give me one second, I'm just getting myself a blue shop towel. And with the shop towel, I get the corner of it and just wipe it off. Just wipe off any extra paint there is on. In order to get that highlight look one desires, you have to have very little paint. And the shop towel can help you achieve that look. Okay, now let's go back with our palette knife and some white, pull it flat out, cut a roll. Nice little roll of paint on the edge of the knife. To come up here, think about where your highlights live. You can sort of decide where everything lives. Okay. Pull out some more white and just continue to highlight it. You just need a nice highlight in there. Okay, and to our mountain mixture, we're going to put some white, and then we're going to put a little bit of blue. It's like a gray bluish, some more white. Cut a roll of paint. You should get that nice little roll of paint on the edge of the, your knife, and let's come up here, push up. Pull back. Okay. 
following the angles. Let me clean off my knife and go back into some white to fix up some of my highlights. Okay. Just like so. You can go back and forth with this. You could spend all day with it. Or you could spend five minutes with it. God, there's so many mosquitoes out here. You can make up anything in here. When it comes to painting, you're the creator. Where are we at? 11 minutes down. Okay, let's go into a little bit of mountain mixture and a little bit of Indian yellow, maybe even a little cadmium yellow. And just like so, we'll come a little bit under, just a little bit. And I want more distant trees. This painting, I feel as if it just needs lots of, um, like, pushing everything back, making everything look far. So I thought that's what we could do today. I thought that's something people might struggle with. I struggled with it for a bit. Okay. Now, we're going to go into some mountain mixture again. And let's come up here. I think we can sketch out a nice little pond, something light. Let's come up here. Let's just get tough with this. Usually it's better not to thin out your paint, but if you have to thin out your paint, just know it won't look exactly the same. That's why right now I'm choosing to struggle a bit with putting on the paint since it won't run smooth enough. Will be worth it. It'll all be worth it. So I'm just going into mountain mixture and just, you can probably see how hard I'm scrubbing on this canvas. Doesn't matter how you get the base paint on as long as you get it on. This will make our next step easier. Just like so. Let's go into cadmium yellow. Load up your brush both sides. Let's come up here. Nice little, nice little highlight. Something like so.
I've been having a tendency recently to put ponds in my paintings. I don't know why. It's become it's becoming a habit. Let's come up here. The dark is your friend. Don't get rid of all that dark. Especially after we put all that work into applying that dark color. Don't get rid of it. People tend to want to get rid of all the dark. And afterwards, it just doesn't look right. Maybe it'll look right for first day or whatever but after you sleep on it and everything you take a better look at it all rested you go mm -mm. that was not the way to go but look how it's still dark but yet it has lights now let's go into a little bit of van dyke brown cut a roll straight van dyke brown and I just want, with my palette knife, just scrub in a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. Seemed like people didn't like when I recorded at night and it was more quiet. I'm going to start recording in the daytime. The only downside is... All the birds chirping all uh, some people might like it I don't know what do I know I'm just the painter let's come up here a little bit of blue a little bit of phthalo blue just scrub it right on Scrub, scrub, scrub. A little bit of white to line it up a bit. And just like that, we have ourselves a nice little pond that lives out. Okay. Now, let's go ahead, let's make a new foothill. You're probably getting tired of these. You like more, but in your painting, if you don't want a foothill, leave it out. I'm just giving you guys ideas and showing you how I do it. It's up to you what you do with that information. Up to you. Shoot, I blended out my highlights, so just going to a little bit of cadmium yellow and just bring back our highlights. Okay, now let me step back a second and take a look. Then we're already at the 20 minute mark. Time really goes by fast. Let's go ahead with that cadmium yellow, just a little tug at it, like a nice little 
it, it's a reflection at the end of the day. Now, let's go back to our palette knife. And let's go into dark sienna. Let's add some white into it. I leave it as marbled as I can leave it as. There we go. We're getting those darker shades towards the bottom. Dark shade for some. Sometimes you gotta do it manually. Okay. Now I want to fix up that land. I usually don't like when my land looks like that. Some parts, yes, but for the most part, I don't like to have my land looking like that. There we go. Now, let's paint in a nice little evergreen tree. I think that would be nice. So, load up our fan brush. Full with paint. And with the corner of your brush, doesn't really matter. You could do whatever you want. Since it's the same color, you can mess up, no one would notice. But when you're putting your highlights, then it matters. And it's like in life, no. When you're putting in all that work, nothing matters to people. People don't pay attention to it. But once you get to that final destination, that nice, beautiful highlight of all that work you put in, everyone wants a piece. Everyone wants to see. It's a little hard to see, even in person, but we work with what we got. These mosquitoes right now are so aggressive. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's go into Van Dyke Brown. Maybe even a little mountain mixture. And get crazy with it. Same thing with the other side. Shoom. Something like so. A little bit of medium onto my brush. Just scrub it on. You gotta get in there nice and tough. Even with putting in medium, you gotta. The reason why most of the time it's better to push and get tough with it, it's because it'll allow. The paint to go into the grain of the canvas and it's it stays on the canvas better some dark sienna and white
just lightly pull down. Usually after like a day or two after it dries, I'll change it up, whether it's colors or are just um like fixing up colors and all that. I never change the image, but I change the colors. Okay, so now little cadmium yellow. Tap tap tap. Okay. Now what I want to do is grab a silver brush, a little bit of brown in there, just a little bit. Titanium white and just form out the rocks. Those nice little rocks that live in the cliff. Or whatever it is. I just like to sort of bring those out. That's all I'm trying to do here. Just bring those those out. Okay. Got my palette knife through that white and just blend it out I'll blend out that white so I won't be too bright so you can leave it as bright or as dark as you want it doesn't matter now I'm gonna go into a little bit of phthalo blue and just Put in some blue that just falls right under there. Some white. Usually waterfalls are mostly white than that blue you think. Now, let's come up here to the canvas. Screw it, I'm gonna go crazy. Okay, let me clean off this bit of canvas, I mean, palette. Okay, I'll put that there. And just thin out a dark color doesn't matter let's come up here get down below and just scrub that paint on Get it nicely coated onto your brush. From your brush to your canvas. Just scrubbing it on. It doesn't really matter how you put it on. It's just the base color. Maybe here. Comes out. Something like so. Little Van Dyke Brown, little mountain mixture. Doesn't matter. Let's come up here and just scrub it. Just like so. Just a little bit. Okay. So with that in.
add some dark skin and white. I'm sorry for going a little overboard today. It's just a good one. Bring in those. Let your hand shake. Just go crazy, go wild. A little bit of dark sienna. And I don't care too much about where the rocks are. We're just going to block in that base highlight color. And it's just dark sienna I'm using right now. All that dark sienna here. It's dark. So we'll, we'll fix it up right now. And a jiffy. Hopefully. Filbert brush. A little bit of white. And this where you where you choose where your your rocks live. Just Pull out a bit, maybe like so. You can pull down, you can, you can do all sorts of stuff. The brush, the palette knife, they're just tools. You end up deciding what you do with them. When you get your first tube of paint, you can paint whatever you want, however you want. And it gives you total, total freedom. Although some people might say they don't like it. As long as you're satisfied with it, that's all that matters. Look, you can go in with the little dark sienna. Just sort of not make it too bright, the white, I guess. Dark scene and white. These didn't get none of it. So I'm just giving it a few little twinkle highlights. Just a few though. Okay, we're at 33 minutes. Let's go into a little cadmium yellow. And just tap it onto your brush. Maybe like so, and maybe, shoot, let's get crazy. Maybe there's, there lives, big old rocky stone, right there. Maybe, maybe it just lives out. And you can scrub it on that base color. Same steps. Just little dark sienna and let it flow. See how marbled it is though? That'll help your a painting to sell. Okay. Maybe. 
just maybe there lives few little grass just that lives right on there okay now final step before I let you guys go because I wouldn't let you guys go with an incomplete painting let's put in some water okay some white and just let it flow and maybe maybe after all everything closes up at the end maybe even a little crimson just to spice things around a bit I'm going to skip this part and I'll be back when I have all that base color on. Okay. Well, now I finished blocking in that base color. Now, all I have to do is go back with cadmium yellow and just tap on what seems to be a nice little highlight. So just cadmium yellow and just going back and forth, loading up your brush. Just by tapping it. Tap it until your paint runs out. The paint on your brush, by the way, don't confuse. Don't get confused. And just like that, I think we have a completed painting. And I save you guys time by cutting me, blocking in that base color. That was useless. You guys see me do it all the time, and it, it was just base color. Well, I thank you guys for joining me today. Today was a great painting, but it took longer than what it was supposed to be. I'm so sorry from the bottom of my heart for taking longer. I should have been able to have done it quicker. But hopefully I could do it quicker for the next video. Until then, I'd like to wish you happy painting. And I should have not said that. That could be copyright. I'd like to wish you guys the best of luck. And until then, God bless. Take care.